Auditions are fraught with peril and pressure. And I have a story about my little daughter. When she was three and a half years old, we enrolled her in a Montessori school a, a, in a class of 23 kids who had already been meeting, so it was like midterm. She would be the new little girl. Well, as we were leaving the house to take her to the first day of school, she picked up a harmonica from our tchotchke shelf and took it with her. Peggy and I didn't understand that, but we understood it later because when we picked her up that afternoon, the teacher was filled with praise for, for Betsy, who spontaneously had gotten up and given a presentation demonstrating the harmonica and sharing it with the other children. It was her way of introducing herself to her new classmates. And it succeeded. A successful audition creates new relationships. It introduces people to each other and helps them begin to work and play together. And in that paradigm, the world is filled with auditions, isn't it? We find it everywhere from the first date to a new boss coming into a company to two rival companies beginning a merger. We're always trying to meet and greet one another, to, to understand each other and to audition for each other. I've, when, when I was a uh, young actor, I was terrified of auditions, and I failed often. I hated them. They made me frightened and depressed. And at that time, I was living in a, a miserable little apartment on uh, West 45th Street between 8th and 9th. And one December morning, the phone rang. It was an agent sending me to an audition. Over on Madison Avenue, five blocks away, put on your suit and tie. They're looking for a winner. Well, I did as I was told, and I was trudging down the sidewalk, looking at my shoes, feeling like anything but a winner, and thinking, how am I going to get myself out of this? If I go in there like this, I'm dead. How can I recover? How can I get back into, into my best winner mood? And New Yorkers were streaming past me on the street, stone-faced, you know how it is on a December morning. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I wonder if I can get any of these people to smile. So I started talking to them. Hi, how are you this morning? You know, I'm a neighbor here, you know. I, th I think I've seen you before. Oh, that's a good color on you. Whatever. How's your smile today? Things like that. You know, anything to get a little interaction going. Now, most of them, being New Yorkers, figured, well, there's just one more lunatic loose on the street. <laughs> but every now and then, I got a response. Somebody would smile. Somebody would nod, speak back to me. There was even one man shake my hand. And this made me feel better. It was nourishing. I thought, oh, okay, they're willing to play the game. So I upped the ante. I, I, I ramped up the energy a little bit. And as I did so, I noticed that people further along the street were, you know, kind of getting curious about it. So w w when they got to me, they were more prepared for a greeting. You know, so, so their energy picked up. And then I noticed, wow, the people behind me are being greeted and speaking, you know. And I realized, well, I've, I've had an effect on the whole 45th Street. Well, by the time I walked into that audition on Madison Avenue, my whole attitude had done a 180. They had no option but to hire me. I was the happiest guy in New York. <laughs> so what's the takeaway? What's the learning? When you're under pressure like that, the worst thing you can do is get deeper into yourself. It didn't take me long to understand that 
when an actor goes for an audition, the last thing they want to see is you act. If they catch you acting, you're out the door. You have to show up in order to be. It's the authenticity that counts. So how is authenticity something that we can bring up when we need it? Other people. And my little daughter had a good hint, too. A prop. Something to get your attention off yourself and onto something or someone else. That's one of the things that I've learned to give to my classes. Eye contact for a speaker is essential. Eye contact, and too many people have a misconception about eye contact. They think, oh, oh yeah, that's where I show the audience my eyes. <laughs> is that how you feel about it? Too many people do. No, eye contact is where you look at their eyes because they are speaking to you. And it's not enough just to speak. You have to listen to. After all, it's communication, and communication is a feedback loop, isn't it? That's why they put two ends on a telephone. <laughs> so remember that when you, when you have a pressure situation, when you're trying to deliver one of your speeches, or you're trying to impress somebody, make sure that they are in the conversation with you, that they are part of the feedback loop. That's my tip. Thanks a lot.